Palm Olive Brush Lift and Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream present Inner Sanctum Mysteries, starring Mary Astor. Welcome, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is your host, Raymond, inviting you to come in through the squeaking door and catch your breath. Now, don't be embarrassed. Many of my guests here are out of breath. But uh, they won't tell on you. I assure you, they won't breathe a word of it. You see, they were warm, too, when they came in, but they've cooled off now. You see, I've kept them on ice. Now, if some of them seem a bit unfriendly to you, don't mind. They can't help being stiff. <laughs> Tonight's inner sanctum story, The Silent Hands, is an original radio drama by Robert Sloan and Robert Tallman and stars Mary Astor in the role of Nina Kohler. This Astor is soon to appear in one of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's 20-year anniversary pictures, Meet Me in St. Louis. Tonight's Inner Sanctum drama is directed by Hyman Brown. Men, Inner Sanctum Mysteries ask you to shave with Palmolive Brushless or Palmolive Lather Shaving Cream. Either Palmolive Brushless or Palmolive Lather Shaving Cream gives you a clean, comfortable shave every time, free from razor burn, or mail the carton top to us and we'll refund your money. When a murderer sneaks up behind you and you're having to rear-view mirror handy, the best thing to do is listen carefully and try to hear the sound of the silent hand. High up on the bluff, overlooking a west coast harbor, police cars feel their way through the fog on their night patrol. They're on the lookout for a mysterious woman in white who has already strangled three men and pushed their bodies over the cliff. Attention, all police cars. Attention, all police cars. Woman in white evening dress reported walking with middle-aged man in Overlook Park. Investigate right away. Investigate right away. Michael. Yes, Nina. It's getting chilly. Oh. Finish your cigarette, will you? Let's go in. Of course, Nina. Here, take my coat in the meantime. Put it over your shoulders. Thank you. What? Trembling. What's the matter? Nothing. Just nerve, that's all. Michael. What, dear? My bag. It's gone. Well, are you sure you had it with you? Oh, yes. Positive. Oh, it must be around here somewhere. Go on ahead, Nina. I'll find it for you. No, I... Oh, all right. But be careful of the cliff. Now, don't you worry, dear. Go on ahead. I'll catch up with you in a moment. Don't be long, Michael. Don't be long. I won't. Always losing a bag. I'm always finding it for her. Hmm. Uh, there it is. Is it? Oh! <laughs> Let go of me. Let go of my neck. No. No. Please. Don't. Don't push me over. Uh, ah! Don't you ever go home, Barnes? Got one of the story to get out. Huh? I'll be finished in a minute, McGraw, and then we can leave. Okay. Oh. Hello, Barnes speaking. Mr. Barnes. Yeah? You want a good story for your paper. Get into a cab and drive to Overlook Park right away. The fourth victim of the woman in white has been found. What? Tell me that again, please. I didn't catch the address. Quick, McGraw. 
Get on another phone and trace this call. I'll what? stall as long as I can. Okay. okay. Did you say that was Overlook Park, madam? Hello? Hello? Never mind, McGraw. She rang off. Well, who was it? Some dame trying to give me a tip on a murder. She said the woman in white had taken care of another victim. The woman in white? Yeah. We'd better get over to Overlook Park right away. There may be a story. I do. Well, wait a minute, Park. What's the matter? Are you scared? Well, well, sure I am. You don't know who that was. It might be a trap. Come on. Hey, look, don't be a fool, Barnes. You might be the next victim. you got to call a cop. And tip off every other newspaper in town. Come on, McGraw. Every second counts. <laughs> That dame was right. Look down there on the rock. What is it? A man's body. A man without a coat. I, uh, we, we better get the police. Yeah, we'll phone the story in and then we'll... Hey, wait a minute. Huh. Look at this. Barnes, uh, don't, don't touch anything. I won't. I just want to see it. Yep. The same, all right. What's the same? This metal ring on the ground. And a piece of silk next to it. That's what they found before in every one of these murders. What do you suppose it means? I don't know. The cops say it's like an East Indian trick, practiced by highway thieves. A precious stone or coins left on the road. When a traveler stoops over to pick it up, wham! A silk noose has slipped over the neck, and in a few seconds, it's all over. What? Yeah? Somebody watching us. What? Over there, behind that hedge. Something moving. Something white. You got a gun? No. Neither have I. Come on, we better not fool around. Which way we go? Back to the car? No. To the house beyond those trees. Maybe we can get to a phone. Okay, let's run for it. Right. What the that? Sounds like some kind of a tropical bird. You mean here in the park? This isn't the park. Yes. Oh, yes, that tropical bird you hear is in the aviary next to the house. It's part of my private collection. Oh. You live in that house? Yes, with my sister. These are our grounds, gentlemen, and your trespassing. Well, lady... Uh, well, we're looking for a telephone, madam. We're from the Chronicle, then. I don't care where you're from. You'll have to leave immediately. But someone's been killed. You'll have to leave immediately. My sister is ill. She can't have any excitement. Yeah. Nina! Go back into the house, Carolyn. Nina! I've been looking for you. Where have you been? You know very well I've been out here feeding the birds. Why do you ask? Because I didn't see you. I thought perhaps you went back to the place. Where... Carolyn! You catch cold out here. We'd better go back in the house. But who are these men, Nina? Reporters, dear. We'd like to use your telephone, miss, if there's one in the house. Why, of course. Come along. I'll, I'll take you to it. Thank you. If you men are reporters, I suppose you want to phone your paper about... About what? Nina, you heard it. I'm I... sorry, dear, if I held your arm too tightly. I didn't want you to stump You're lying. You don't want me to talk. That's not true, Carolyn. You can say anything you please. Go ahead. Say anything you please. Oh, oh. oh Nina. Please forgive me. I... I didn't mean what I said before. I... I'm just upset because you've left me alone so much tonight. But I haven't left you alone, dear. Oh. I've been in the house with you all evening. Don't you remember? Oh, yes, of course. You've been with me all evening. In the house. All right, Karen. I think you're strong enough now to take these gentlemen inside and show them to the phone. I'm going to stay out here for a while and uh, speak to the birds. Yes, Nina. This way, please. Now, go along, McGraw. I'll be with you in a minute. Okay, I'll put the call through. <laughs> Are you staying behind just to watch me? In a way, yes. You're a fool. Well, maybe I am. But these birds you've collected fascinate me. Especially the gaily colored ones which were brought over from the Orient. Oh, are you a fancier? In a manner of speaking. At least I know that the creature with the yellow bill and the green eyes is a very rare species. 
I had to write a story about it once. Indeed? Yeah. It's found only in certain parts of India. What if it is? You've been to India, haven't you? Never. You're lying. I'm not accustomed to being spoken to like this. But you are accustomed to lying. Only that alibi about not being out of the house tonight won't stand up. Won't it? No. That dress you're wearing is torn. And the piece that's missing from it is in my pocket. I found it out there on the cliff, near a metal ring and a bit of silk. Now you're lying. I have the evidence right here in my hand. Give it to me. Not so fast. Let go of my hand. Let go. Open it. Open it. I'll dig my nails into you. Wait a minute. Wait. I'll open it. There. I knew you were lying. There's nothing in it. Oh, of course not. But I found out what I wanted to know. For a woman, your hands are abnormally strong. So now it's your turn to watch me and follow me around, huh, Mr. McGraw? Oh, not necessarily. Your friend must think I intend to run off before the police arrive. But he's wrong. I have nothing to fear from the police. Of course not. Don't stand there and grin at me. I'm cold and miserable. If you had any manners, you'd take off your coat and offer it to me before I freeze to death. You can have my coat. Thank you. Wilma, where are you going? Back to the house. There's a police car there now. Well, good. I'll go back with you. Just a moment. What's the matter? My watch. I've I've lost my watch somewhere along the path. (laughs) Who are you kidding? I just saw you throw it over in the grass. Here it is. Right over here. What's the door? Where'd she go to? Where'd she... Oh! Oh! I stop! No! 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 Just push me up! Such a nice boy. But you know, it's his own fault in a way. He never should have tried that jump without a parachute. He may hurt himself someday, like the fellow who went shaving gives himself a good case of razor burn. Men, when you torture your face with razor burn, don't just blame your razor blade. Instead, try Palmolive Brushless, that smooth, easy to spread, won't clog your razor shave cream. You see, Palmolive Brushless literally lubricates your skin, so your razor just glides along without tugging, scratching, or scraping. Yes, mister, even the toughest beards lie down and wilt when you use Palmolive Brushless. And your face is cool, comfortable, not drawn or dry. So why don't you quit bothering with a shaving brush and try Palmolive Brushless? You buy Palmolive Brushless in the big money-saving victory jar, and we'll guarantee you a clean, comfortable shave every time. And we know you'll sing goodbye forever to painful razor burn. Let's get back to Nina and that beautiful Indian rope trick. After that um, double-header killing, Nina was picked up by the police and put in jail on suspicion of murder. But the case against her was still pretty slim, and... uh, when Barnes went down to his cell to get a story for his paper. You seem very confident for a woman who has so little time left to live. You're meddling, Mr. Barnes. Something that doesn't concern you. Oh, it does concern me. McGraw was a good friend of mine. I'm warning you not to interfere, Mr. Barnes. You'll regret it if you do. You'll regret it more. I have everything to gain and nothing to lose. Nothing but your life. Yeah, what about yours? Ah, uh-huh, they'll never convict me. Don't be so sure. I'm innocent. They can't even keep me here another 24 hours. So your lawyers are going to spring you, huh? I have influential friends, Mr. Barnes. And when I'm free, I want to be left alone. You understand? You don't frighten me, Miss Kohler. I'll get the goods on you if it's the last thing I ever do. If you try, it will be the last thing you ever do. Oh, thank you. 
You're free. You're free, darling. Yes, I know. George told me he was getting out of risk. You see, Mr. Barnes, I have influential people. Well, they won't always be able to help you. No? Come along, Carolyn. I have so much to tell you. Yes, dear. Mr. Barnes, you've got to help me. What? It's a matter of life and death. Come to the house tonight at 10 o'clock. I'll be feeding the birds in the aviary. Right. Carolyn, what are you doing? I'm coming, Nina. I'm, I'm coming. Miss Cola. Miss Cola. Oh, Mr. Barnes, thank heaven you're here. I was afraid you wouldn't come. Well, you said it was a matter of life and death. It is. It is. My sister's been lying to the police. And she's made me lie for her, too. What do you mean? Well, that night you were here, that night Michael was killed. She told you she was in the house with me all evening, but she wasn't. She was out with him, walking through the park. Why didn't you tell the police? I couldn't, I couldn't. I was afraid of what she might do to me. You don't know her, Mr. Bond. She'd kill me if she thought I was telling you this. But I've got to tell somebody. I, I've just got to. Oh, wait a minute, kid. Get hold of yourself. Uh, the night this fellow Michael was killed... Your sister made you say that she was home with you all evening. Yes, that's right. Did she tell you why she wanted you to lie for her? Yes. I don't believe her. She said she had nothing to do with Michael's death, but that there was no way of proving her innocence. She was afraid that police might convict her on circumstantial evidence if I didn't give her an alibi. I see. Uh, one more question, Miss Gola. You've been to India, haven't you? Yes, we lived there a number of years. I thought so. When I saw that bird with the yellow bill and the green... Well, by the way, where is that bird? I don't see it. It's gone. The cage is empty. Your sister must have taken it away. I had to, oh. Mr. Huh? Barnes. He was dead. Oh, Nina. Why are you I... so frightened, Carolyn? Have you been talking out of school? Oh, no, no. What have you told him? Nothing. Nothing. I haven't said a word. You're lying. I... Go into the house, Carolyn. Just a moment. Are you meddling again, Mr. Barnes? I'm more than meddling. I'm going to protect the state's key witness in its case against you. So you have told him. Yes. Yes, I told him everything. I don't care what you do to me. I don't care. I don't Be care. quiet. Be quiet. I don't care. How long do you think you can keep this up, Miss Caller? Aren't five cold-blooded murders enough for you? You're a fool, Barnes. Phone the police, Carolyn. Hurry. I'll keep her here until they arrive. Carolyn, don't you dare. Phone the police, I tell you. She'll kill you if you don't. Yes, yes, I'll call them. Honey. Carolyn, come back here. Jig's just about up, Miss Caller. You think you're clever, don't you? Not especially. But I know who committed those murders. You don't. You're wrong, Mr. Barnes. I can prove that you're wrong. You're wasting your breath. But I'm innocent, I tell you. And I can prove it if you give me half a chance. What chance did you give McGraw? I wasn't anywhere near McGraw when he was killed. And Michael was my best friend. Yeah, tell that to the cop. Give me a break, Mr. Barnes. I'll admit I was with Michael that night he was killed, but I didn't do it. I couldn't have done it. You couldn't have done it? No. I'll show you why if you let me go back to the place. What happened? Uh, what do you think I am? I think you're a gentleman, Mr. Barnes. And I know you want to find out who murdered your friend. But you never will find out if they convict me. You'll never find the real murderer. Won't you believe me? Won't you give me this one last chance? Uh, I don't know. Please, please, let me, let me prove that you're wrong. Okay. Where do you want to go? Back to the edge of the cliff. Michael and I were standing just about here, Mr. Bond. Yes, go on. We were talking about the mysterious murders that had taken place on these bluffs overlooking the harbor. We were joking about the fact that I was a woman dressed in white. You're in white again tonight, Miss Cola. Yes, it's my favorite color. I see. We stood here for a while, and then the cold air chilled me, so I asked uh, Michael for his coat. Uh, may I have your coat, please, Mr. Barnes? What's the idea? I want to show you what happened. Well, do you have to be that graphic? Yes, it's important. The details are terribly important. All right, you can have my coat. But I'm warning you, Miss Kohler. I know the game. 
Slipping a silk noose over a man's neck is done more easily when his coat's off. That's why all the victims were found in their shirt sleeves. But Michael was the only one I knew. I couldn't possibly have had a motive for killing the others. They're complete strangers to me. That's not much of a defense. Psychopathic murderers often kill without a motive. They do it for the thrill it gives them. Whether they know they're victims or not. All right, continue with your story, Miss Cola. Well, after I put on Michael's coat, I started toward the house. Eh? Yeah. And then I missed my bag. Eh? Yeah. I guess I left it near the edge in this, over there somewhere beside that rock. <gasps> Good heavens. What's the matter? Isn't that another bag over there? Where? Beside the rock. Get it, Mr. Barnes, and bring it here. What? Bring it here. Oh, no, you bring it here. Oh, all right. If you're that frightened of me, I will. Just an ordinary bag. I don't know why you were afraid of picking it up. Nothing could have... Oh, my neck! I knew you couldn't resist another victim, Mr. Barnes. But you forgot about my strong hands and this coat I borrowed from you. You should have known better than to try that trick while I still had it on. There are other ways of committing murder, Miss Kohler. And I'm sure a psychopathic killer like yourself knows most of them. Yes, I do. Stay where you are. Uh, uh. Uh, you're, you're smarter than I thought, Miss Kohler. I never dreamed that you'd find a gun in that bag. That was the chief's idea. You underrated our police force, Barnes. We've suspected you for some time. We couldn't get the goods on you till tonight. We? Yes. Didn't you know there were women detectives? Uh, My sister and I have been leading you on ever since you killed Michael. And all the time I was figuring I could pin the rap on you. Uh. That Barnes boy gave me the willies. And that, of course, leads to the gimmies. Well, look here. Here's... Laptop with the wanties. I want lots of lather. I want lots of lather. Okay, you men who use a brush when you shave, you want lots of lather. And you'll get lots of lather simply by using Palmolive Lather Shaving Cream. For an honest whisker wilter, millions of men prefer it. In fact, more men use Palmolive than any other lather shaving cream. Here's why. First, Palmolive Lather Shaving Cream gives lots and lots of lather. E-Man Lather with millions of moist bubbles to blitz your beard. Second, Palm Olive Lather lubricates your razor, speeds your shave, and leaves your skin smooth, cool, comfortable. So, if you're a lather and brush user and want to avoid razor burn, get Palm Olive Lather for a smooth, easy shave that you'll whistle your way through. Get Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream knowing it's going to leave your skin smooth, your face clean and comfortable, or your money back. Well, it's time to fold up the ghosts now, those little folds, and put them back in the closet with the family skeleton, which is something. But remember, the next time you're out in the park on a foggy night, keep your shirt on and keep your coat on, too. Although... Silent hands are liable to give you a pain in the neck. Uh, by the way, this month's inner sanctum mystery is Set the Spider to the Fly by Richard Shattuck. Well, if there's no more business to scare up, I guess I'll turn on the darkness. Thanks. So, until next week, when palm olive brushless and palm olive leather shaving creams bring you another inner sanctum mystery. Good night. Pleasant dreams. 
What is the 14-day palm olive plan? Yes, what is the 14-day palm olive plan? It's the biggest beauty news in years. Doctors tested this plan, proved it brought lovelier complexions to two out of three of all the women tested. Here it is. Wash your face with palm olive soap. Then massage for a full 60 seconds with palm olive's lovely soft lather. Then rinse. Do this three times a day. Easy to do, yet 36 doctors prove this palm olive plan brings a lovelier complexion to two out of three women. No matter what type of skin you have, dry or oily, the 14-day palm olive plan works. So get palm olive. See what palm olive can do for your skin in only 14 days. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.